morning and welcome to Church of the Holy Apostles for this online service of daily morning prayer on this first Sunday after the Epiphany. At this time, and at least through the remainder of this month, um, in-person worship is suspended in the diocese, but this service is being live streamed to our parish YouTube channel, and a full video recording will also be made available on our Facebook page and Facebook group. The service leaflet for this service may also be accessed at our webpage, Holy Apostles website, under the Worship tab. As always, especially during this time when things are consistently changing, uh, please look for the regular weekly email from the parish on Tuesdays for the most current and up-to-date information and news from Holy Apostles. Let us prepare to worship the Lord. I will give you as a light to the nations that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. Dearly beloved, we have come together in the presence of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, to set forth his praise, to hear his holy word, and to ask for ourselves and on behalf of others those things that are necessary for our life and our salvation and so that we may prepare ourselves in heart and mind to worship him, let us kneel in silence and with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins, that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia.
A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. A reading from the Gospel according to Mark. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river of Jordan, confessing their sins. Now, John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved, 
With you, I am well pleased. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the words of my lips and the meditation of my heart be always acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. On this first Sunday after the Epiphany, we celebrate the baptism of our Lord. And in this year's lectionary cycle, we are hearing mostly from Mark's gospel, with its short, direct, and energetic narrative. In all the scriptures appointed for today, our first reading, the very opening words of the first book of the Bible, and in the psalm, we find both water and the voice of the Lord. The voice of the Lord is a powerful voice, 
a sovereign voice, and a loving one. A voice that brings order out of chaos, a voice that calls into being what was not, a voice that affirms what is true. Water, meanwhile, both for ancient peoples and still for us, is a powerful symbol of often uncontrollable chaos and danger. And though the Jordan River is little more than a slow-moving, muddy stream, and most of our baptismal fonts are small, ornate fixtures holding a few cups of water, the water we find in Genesis and in this morning's psalm is quite different. The mighty waters, the dark-covered surface of the deep. I'm no seafarer myself, but I still remember quite vividly an experience as a young boy on a small rented catamaran on the Gulf Coast. My grandfather, who was in command of this very small vessel, literally a sail and a flat space for three or four passengers between the two hulls, my grandfather was having trouble getting the boat to turn back toward shore. He was never a man to show fear, but I could feel the fear growing as we continued to head out to sea, and the waters got rougher, and the small boat seemed to get smaller still. We made it back all right, of course, but even in that relatively harmless experience, the vastness of the ocean and its power made an impression on me. And it is, at least in part, this water, this danger, this powerful force that we should think of when we think of baptism. Indeed, these intimidating images of water are explicitly placed before us in every baptismal liturgy in the thanksgiving over the water, wherein the celebrant prays, over it the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through it, you led the children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt into the land of promise. In it, your son Jesus received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah to lead us through his death and resurrection from the bondage of sin into everlasting life. Being brought by God through the waters of death and bondage into life and freedom is also reflected in the ancient iconography of Christ's baptism, where we see in the waters below Christ's feet imagery of sea monsters and the old river gods fleeing away or trampled underfoot. In Christ's baptism, into which we too are baptized, chaos and fear are driven away. But they are driven away through a baptism in which we also must descend into the waters and pass through to the other side. Though even the other side of the baptismal waters, we are reminded, is not a place of pure calm and safety. The very next verses of Mark's gospel, which we didn't hear, tell us Immediately, the Spirit drove Jesus into the wilderness where he was tempted by Satan and he was with the wild animals and the angels served him. This past week, in witnessing what transpired in our nation's capital, we all had some experience of chaos and fear. The experience for most of us was visual, but still I suspect for you as for me, quite visceral. Scenes of destruction and disruption as a flood of humanity poured into the halls of the Capitol, themselves driven by a barrage of misinformation and fear. Scenes of disorder and failure 
at the very heart of a great symbol of freedom and self-government for all the world to see. What is the church in America to say at such a time? What are followers of Jesus who live in this country to do at such a time? On this day, a good start is for the people of God to be reminded of our baptism. The baptism of Christ into which we have been baptized is a clear renunciation of all spiritual forces of wickedness that rebel against God, of all evil powers that corrupt and destroy the creatures of God, and of all sinful desires that draw us away from the love of God. It is a turning to Jesus Christ as Savior and placing our whole trust, our whole trust, in his grace and love as we choose to follow and obey him as Lord. It is affirming this creed by which we proclaim who we believe God to be and what we believe God has done for us and for all the world. And it is committing ourselves again every day to walk in that way as together members of the one body in humility, witness, and service. Striving, not only hoping and praying, but striving for justice and peace among all people, respecting the dignity of everyone. I know we hear this language a lot in the church. It's good that we do, because it's serious stuff, life and death stuff. That is literally what baptism is about, moving from death to life and being called to a way of life that seeks continually to keep moving further into life and truth and love, continually resisting the pull of death and deception and hate. We know this country is not our eternal home. But this land, which so many of us love, is where we sojourn now. And this democratic society, which affords us so many freedoms, is a hard one and fragile thing, not to be taken for granted. Its health relies on more than just the efforts of individuals to be people of truth and goodwill, but it doesn't rely on less than that either. And of all people, the members of the body of Christ should be among those who can model for the body politic what it looks like to live as a community of diversity bound together in love and service. It's not easy, this life of the baptized. It is striving. And we know at the outset that it means regular failures, confessed and forgiven. It's not a retreat from the world. Often it means being driven by the Spirit into the world to struggle there for the increase of God's kingdom. It's not safe. It is choosing to take up the cross, indeed to be buried with Christ in the hope that we might also be raised with him. But it is the way of life and peace as we bind ourselves to him who stills the raging of the storm. And it is the way of truth as we follow him 
who does not simply speak the truth, but is the truth. Amen. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy upon us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy. In you, Lord, is our hope. And we shall never go in vain. Father in heaven, who at the baptism of Jesus in the river Jordan proclaimed him your beloved Son and anointed him with the Holy Spirit, grant that all who are baptized into his name may keep the covenant they have made and boldly confess him as Lord and Savior who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. Amen. O God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you that the week to come may be spent in your favor. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work. For our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are loved. For the people of this community, the nation, and the world, and for those in authority among them. for the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel, and all who seek the truth. For Michael, our presiding bishop, and Phoebe, our bishop, and for all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God and the church. For the Anglican Church in Aotearoa, New Zealand, and Polynesia. For the Sisterhood of St. John the Divine, Victoria, British Columbia. 
for Calvary Memphis. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation, and especially for those on our parish prayer list, Fred, Marilyn, Wendy, Brooke, Robbie, Abigail, Gloria, Bob, Nathaniel, Ronnie, Gia, Allegra, Bonnie, Tom, David, Kim, Edna, Neil, Beth, Philip, Catherine, Brad, Betty, Judy, Dudley. Hear us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life, and especially for all those celebrating birthdays and anniversaries this week. Ashley Way, Nick Marshall, Lorena Sappington, Allison Donnelly, Daniel Fang, Michelle Calhoun, George K. Well, Jr., Madison McMinn, Caroline Phillips Burke, Susan Guffin, Jamie Stockton. We will exalt you, O God, our King. And praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. Who put their trust in you. Faithful and loving God, you trace our journeys and our resting places, and are acquainted with all our ways. Sustain, holy apostles, with your grace during this time of transition. Bless us with joy, beauty, and wonder, and bind us together in fellowship and love. Empower us to continue to be a place of refuge for the weary and companionship for the pilgrim. Raise up for us a pastor who will care for your people, equip us for our ministries, and shine a light on your path. Grant that we may walk with you in the way of love and reflect your goodness and life always. This we pray in the power of the Holy Spirit through your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.
Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen.